We're going to talk about the toxic waste dump problem, which I think is a horrible name, but I guess it does describe it. So this this problem is is something like, you know, let's assume you're some city planner or some sort of governmental person and, and you're supposed to try to find out, you know, you want to put some toxic waste somewhere. I mean, no one wants it anywhere close to them. Everyone seems to agree, yeah, yeah, we should put it somewhere, but no one wants it close to them. So this is sort of the, the idea. This obviously doesn't just have to be with toxic waste. It could be lots of things. But the idea is you want to find a location that's furthest from any of the other sites. So this could be real practical things. I don't know. What if you're opening up a store or something like that? And, you know, you have there's other stores that compete against you. And maybe you don't want to be so close to them. Maybe you do. But let's assume you want to be the furthest distance away from other competing stores. Then, you know, this is what you might want to do. You might want to consider, hey, where is the best place to put my store or my toxic waste dump or whatever, my garbage dump? Do you notice that in this Voronoi diagram, I've got four sites, one, two, three, four here. And I might want to consider then, okay, where, where is the best place to put it? Okay, so this is going to be the idea. Where, where do you want to put your waste dump? If I put it here, it's really close to these people. They don't like it. These people here will be really happy. If I put it over here somewhere, well, then these people won't be happy. So you got to think like, well, obviously you put it as far away as you can, but let's assume you have to put it somewhere in here. Let's assume you're, you're stuck, you're constrained. Obviously, I would just put it way over here. But in this diagram here, where could I put it? Okay, so let's take a look here. We're going to do this LEC. It's called the largest empty circle. So I put this, you're pointless. Aww. But we, we do want to try to find the largest empty circle that fits in the diagram. And here's a pro tip for you. Um, it's almost always going to be centered on a vertex. So what do I mean by this? I'll show you. So let's say I'm trying to assume where this would be. See, it's probably going to be either here or here, because those are the two places where there's a vertex, either here or here. So if I put it here, do you notice the largest empty circle that fits would be some circle that I could draw that sort of, you know, goes out to here like this, like this distance here away. This would be the radius of my circle. So I would draw myself a circle that goes sort of, I don't know, let me attempt to draw that. I'm a really bad drawer, but uh, oh well, something like, maybe like, oops, the last part was bad. I think you get the idea, don't you? Some sort of circle like this. Something like that. So this here would be the distance here. That would be the, you know, or the radius, you could say, of that circle. Well, I could also draw one here. Do you notice this one here would have a bigger radius? So that's why this was probably not the best one. There's probably a better one. And I think I copied it because it took me a while to draw it here. Um, so if I do like this here, watch. I can center it right around here. Let's see. Something like, something like this, I think, will work. Do you notice then if I center it here, then I get the biggest distance here. So this, and notice this distance right here is the same as that distance. It's the same as that distance. That's actually the definition of a vertex in these Voronoi diagrams. Do you notice it's kind of that same distance there? So that distance, I think this will be the best place to, you know, put my store, for example. I'll put it here because I'm, you know, I'm the largest distance away from my nearest competitors there or there or there. And it's going to be that same distance. So that's the key. Now you might want to think about how do I find you know, the distance. Well, don't forget your radius of your circle in this case right here. We'll just use the distance formula. The distance formula, I don't know if you remember it. You can find it on your formula booklet, but it goes x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. If it was in 3D, we'd add the z's, but this is all I would need. So this is my radius or my distance here. So d, which is the radius of my circle, is just this formula here. Well, I already know this. This I can look up. So now we can do an example. So uh, we want to open up a new shoe store. That's why I put this down. Shoe she, because someone actually made a shoe out of sushi. Oh, God. I hate myself. <laughs> this made me laugh. <laughs> All right. So um, so you're, you have a Voronoi diagram down here, and you want to open up a new shoe store. Okay, so these... These are here are the sites already of shoe stores. There's one here, there's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. And the question is, first of all, where should you put your store? So you want to maximize the distance to them. And after that, what's the distance from your store to the nearest store? So that's the next question. First is, where's the best place? And then what's the actual distance? Well, what did I tell you the trick was? It's probably on a vertex. So let's just think about where the vertex is. There's one here, there's one here. Which one should I pick? 
So just try to think about it. You can, you can even use your hands, like your fingers. If you're on a test, for example, you're looking at this, literally just take that vertex and put your fingers like to the nearest site and see like, all right, how long is that? And do the other one and see which one's bigger. Or you can even do it with like a piece of paper. So maybe you have a piece of paper and you just sort of mark down how big it is or whatever. So just see this one right here. If I, if I test this one out, do you notice the distance from this vertex to this point? Let's see, it's like a diagonal. It goes like one, two, three sort of diagonal units. So one, two, three, one, two, three. So those are the same. How about over here though? Here, it's more than that. Do you notice I would have to go one, two, three, four, five units over and one up. So that diagonal right there, do you see this diagonal here? Will be considerably longer than that one. So can we agree this right here is the best location right here? This one right here? This is the best place for it. So what's the location of that? Well, if we look at this, it looks like it's x equals five y equals 5, so I'll say, all right, it's got coordinates of 5, 5. That's the best location for my store. Great, I'll place it there. The next question is, how far away am I from the nearest store? Here's the good news, you can pick any point. So you can choose, so I'll say this, maybe choose any site. Doesn't matter which one you want to choose, right? Because your center, God, my writing is really atrocious today. So your your center is going to be uh, 5, 5, right? We just determined that. So we can choose any site we want. But we know that our center is at 5, 5. So if we choose any site, I don't know which one you want to pick. Maybe I pick this one right here. Maybe I'll pick that one. It, it really didn't matter, though, because I could do it to this one. I could do it to that one. I could, uh, yeah, this or that or that will be the same. You have to pick the nearest sites. So in this case right here, I think the best one, I mean, for me, maybe is going to do, maybe I'll try to pick this one right here. I'll try to do that line right there. I'll try to find this distance here. Well, I have to look at those points here. This one right here has coordinates 5, 5, so I'll call that x1 and y1. This will be my next point right here. And let's see, it'll have coordinates 10 and 6. Okay, so 10, 6, that'll be x2, y2. Now all I have to do is just use my distance formula. Well, the distance formula, again, remember, it's a good idea to always show it to your teacher or the person marking your exams or whatever. Show them you know what you're doing. You're using the distance formula. Whoops. So it's uh, y1 minus y2, all that squared. All right, so now let me show the substitution. And so I'm going to go d equals, let's see, x1 minus x2. So 5 minus 10, all that, whoops. Make a nicer bracket there, squared, plus, let's see, y1 minus y2, so that'll be 5 minus 6. And don't worry about the negatives, because when you take a negative and you square it, it becomes positive, so we won't have any problems here. So we keep going then, therefore, let's see, 5 minus 10 is minus 5, isn't it? So that's going to be squared, plus 5 minus 6 is minus 1 squared. Well, what's 5 squared? Do you know what that is? 5 squared, well, because it's minus 5 times minus 5 is 25. And 1 squared, well, minus 1 times minus 1 is a positive 1. That's just this. So then I get that my distance, if I really want the exact value, is just square root of 26. That's my distance. And by the way, these are in kilometers, so it'll be root 26 kilometers. This is my exact answer. So this is, you know, if you don't want to use a calculator, this is the exact answer. However, if you want to use a calculator for it, let's do that. I'll add a calculator. I'll say square root of 26, which is 5.099 to three significant figures. I guess that'll make it 5.10 because that'll round up So 5.10. So I'll say that. So I'll say approximately 5.10 kilometers as well. That's also correct. It all depends on how you want to do it. The exact value, I guess, is always the best, but if you want to tell someone how far to travel, you don't want to tell them, travel square root of uh, 26 kilometers. You can say, no, 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 travel about 5.1 kilometers. There we go.